Hello everyone! Welcome to Homeschool Happy Hour. Um, if you are watching the replay, thank you so much for watching the replay. Hey, how are you guys? Hi Melanie. Hi mom. <laughs> mom is watching me like every day now. <laughs> Hi Darcy. Hi Alana. How are you guys? Hi Allison. When Allison Wonderland six is that Allison? <laughs> mom, did you tell Allison this? <laughs> hey Foxy, Mama Judy. That's a cool one. How are you guys? Hi, Melanie. Okay, so real quick, let me just uh, do the whole thing. Um, homeschool Happy Hour is brought to you by Homeschool Scopes. If you don't know what Homeschool Scopes is, it is a Facebook group. You can find us on Facebook at homeschoolscopes.tv. And every day at 1.45 Pacific Time, 3.45 Central, yada, yada. Um, hi, Bonnie. Bonnie, I've been really enjoying your scopes, by the way. Um yeah, so join us for Homeschool Happy Hour every day. Somebody else hosts, and today I'm going to host it. And I am Lindsay. I blog at thenittygrittymom.com. You can find me. Um, thank you. Um, Melanie posted the, the URL there. Um, hey, Sarita, thank you for inviting. Um, and what was I saying? Okay, you could find me on Facebook at the Nitty Gritty Mom page or follow my handle at Nitty Gritty Linz. Hey, Sarita. Um, and I'm also on Pinterest at Lindsay at the Nitty Gritty Mom. So, um, okay, so let me just go ahead and say hello. Oh, you know what? Um, let me show you really quick the graphic. Let's see here. I'm going to be talking about this post that I wrote. Alana, you love homeschool happy hour? I do too. I try to catch it every day. I need to do better about that. About that. Um, okay, so yes, you can teach your child. This is a guest post I wrote a while ago. I actually wrote a little blurb on my blog. Um, here it is. Maybe that's what I was supposed to do. Okay, why, this is my blog, by the way. The Nitty Gritty Mom. Here, let me take my tablet out. So I wrote this post, Why You Can Teach Your Child Best. So um, let me just go ahead and flip it now so we could talk about that. Hello. Okay, so how is everybody? Randy, I hear you like to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, it, it always is, right? So, um, how is everybody? Just let me know how you're doing. Oh, thank you, Melanie. I, um, I tried. <laughs> I tried. Um, okay, so by the way, let me, I almost forgot I have to give my shout outs. Um, Sarita, it's too cold for this mess. <laughs> oh, I wish that I had some snow. I wish I had some cool weather. Yeah, Tickles and Tots is here, yay! Okay, so really quick, let me get into um, this so I don't take up all your afternoon. Um, I have a couple of shout outs. Um, okay, probably, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I love this necklace. I just decided to dress up. I was like, yeah, I, I, I never leave. The only place I dress up for is going to church and like, that's it. That's it. Otherwise, I'm in the house or at the grocery store and I don't have places where I could put on makeup and wear pretty necklaces. So I'm doing it. <laughs> Homeschool happy hour, yay! <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, Brave Writer. My first shout out is going to be for Julie Bogart at Brave Writer. Um, I know every last one of her scopes is awesome. She has wonderful topics and um, the life of a homeschool mom. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brandy, am I rocking the comfy pants? Yeah, yeah, I am. I have my 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 fancy pants on. I have a tank top on and fancy pants, and both of them are made of spandex, so we're good. <laughs> so anyway, um, she better be Brandy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, thankfully home. She put Julie Bogart up there. So she's my first shout-out. She did a wonderful scope today about perfectionism, um, which is something that a lot of us are plagued with, perfectionism. It's funny because... Um, Sometimes we could be perfectionists in different ways. Um, I am not a perfectionist when it comes to other people. I'm not a critical person. Um, I don't want to criticize them. I don't want them to criticize me. <laughs> so I'm like to each his own. But when it comes to my projects and my own like creations and my own art and my, my own little world, um, and this has a lot to do with ADD, um, I kind of can be a little bit of a perfectionist and sometimes it keeps me from accomplishing things. So um, Julie did a wonderful job. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty long scope, um, but it's totally worth it. So when you have time, plug in your earphones, lay down, listen to her um, or just put her on when you're doing dishes or something. And she has wonderful things to say about perfectionism. And she's a very accomplished, um, successful woman. So she, I'm sure, 
she has something very beneficial for us in there. Well, I know she has something beneficial for us in there. I didn't watch the entire thing, but I watched most of it, and it was amazing. So um, thank you for inviting followers, you guys, and thank you for the hearts, by the way. And if I miss comments, I'm so sorry. We did a hop last night, and I watched the replay, and I missed so many comments, so I was sending people notes and messages. So I'm so sorry. I love each and every one of you, and thank you so much. Um, she has five successful kids. Yeah, Cynthia knows all about that. She is a big part of the Brave Rider lifestyle. So, um, okay, did I say Cynthia? Christy, what, I, I am wrong C. <laughs> oh, my alarm is going off. Kids! Zoe, I think your alarm is going off. I'm going to have to buzz these kids. Zoe! Sorry, that is totally real life right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's homeschool, the homeschool timer. Um, I have a bell. When they hear it, they come running. I don't like to yell. <laughs> It works. It keeps me from yelling. And they like it. They like it because it's it's not um, mean. Okay, Zoe, do you hear that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have, okay, Allison Winterland, Mommy, your alarm. Yeah, yeah. They both, I have timers for both of them. I have two timers and I have a bell. I have all this stuff because I hate yelling. Mom, too funny. Mom, you know me. <laughs> yes, I did just do that. <laughs> No, really, the bell is awesome. I wrote a I wrote a post on um, homeschool supplies I can't live without, and I'm telling you that is my number one thing is the bell. Wherever they're at in the house, I just ring, I just ding the bell, and they come running because otherwise, um, <laughs> Brandy, <laughs> I totally outed myself today. I'm like, oh snap, I have the bell. Um, no, really, they they I, I, all I have to do is just ding the bell and they come running because usually I'm like. Lorenzo, Zoe, yelling and yelling and yelling for them, and they're like, what? What? And I, I, I don't know, do any of you do that? Do you say, like, don't say what? Come here, I'm calling you. So, um, you text, Melanie texts the kids. <laughs> that is so funny. In this day and age, oh, you have a whistle. Foxy Mama has a whistle. Oh, yeah. I need a bell, like a large dinner bell size. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is so funny. This is so funny. Okay, um, oh, honey, can you turn that fan on or reach up and, which, is it that one? I'm hot. It's, it got hot in here out of nowhere. Do I have the oven on? Ooh. Okay, so, um, what was I saying? I was doing this. <laughs> oh, that's true. I have a little place so I could ring the bell. Yeah, you know what? I just, okay, we're like way off topic, but this is so fun, right? Um, my friend, um, her dad was a carpenter and he, um, he built their house. They had a really big, beautiful house and, um, they had an intercom system and I swear that was like the best thing ever. You want to say hi, Zo? <laughs> okay. That, oh, that fan feels good. Thank you, honey. Um, okay. So anyhow, brave comedy hour. <laughs> hi, mommy. I love that my mom's here. That's so awesome. Hi, grandma. Oh, she says, hi, Grandma. Grandma was on there. Mom, you got to put some sort of a picture on your um, Periscope thing because it's still an egg. We're going to think you're a troll. We get really nasty guys on here saying stuff. You need to put like a flower or something. <laughs> Every time I see the egg, I'm like, ooh, block. And then I'm like, no, that's my mom. I can't block my mom. <laughs> yeah, crack your egg, Amy says. Crack your egg, Donna. Okay. Okay, let's get back. <laughs> So, um, this is so fun. Um, okay, Brave Rider, Julie, perfectionist. Ashley N. White. I forgot her handle. Is Ashley here? Um, Ashley N. White did, she did a couple scopes today. They just made granola um, a, a little while ago, but she did an earlier scope on um, teaching comprehension. And, um, oh, everybody's laughing at <laughs> my mommy. My mom's so sweet. She's the best mommy ever. Mom's Little Learners. Thank you so much, um, Melanie. Mom's Little Learners did something about teaching comprehension through stories um, with the three little pigs. And it caught my eye because she had um, like a picture of a book that was, um, they're fun fables that are like switched around. I forget what they call them. But um, it was the three little pigs story taught by the perspective of the fox. And when I gave birth to my son, 
exactly 12 years ago on Monday. It was 12 years. Um, she is the bomb. I love her. And she, um, and she's a past teacher. She fractured fairy tales. Yes. Amy knows it. Fractured fairy tales. I love those. I love those. So exactly 12 years ago, um, I received a baby gift and it was that book, that same book. So it was one of the first books that my son ever had. And, um, we just loved it. We still read it. 12 years later, we're reading it. And, um, we've read some other fractured fairy tales too. They're so much fun. I love them. So make sure you watch Ashley and white. And then, um, at future hope com, Alana, she's on here. So Alana, you could throw up an emoji or something. Um, she's doing a giveaway. She's doing a math game. Um, it's supposed to be for um, those that excel in math, um, but she's doing a wonderful giveaway. And so she scoped about it like 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes ago, right before I came on for happy hour. So make sure there she is. So go ahead and click on her or watch her. And um, she has a wonderful replay. Okay. So, oh goodness, it's already been 10 minutes. That's how long my intro took. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about um, why you are a wonderful teacher for your child. Um, the past couple of days, I've actually had several people message me on Facebook. Um, I have a lady that's supposed to be calling me today um, to do a little bit of home, homeschool consulting, um, but they're really concerned about whether or not they're competent enough or good enough to teach their child. Um, like... Honestly, I, I want to say raise your hand, but you, I can't, we can't see that, right? I want to say raise your hand if you felt like that. But um, just tap the screen or throw up something if you've ever had that feeling, if you've ever felt like, gosh, am I, can I really do this? Can I teach? Oh, okay, there, Amy has the little hand. Yeah, at some point we think to ourselves, like, can we really do this? Are, are we, um, you feel like that today? Oh, Kid induced crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> Kid induced crazy. Wait, I want to. Oh, I missed you. I missed you. I want to follow you. Kid induced crazy. Throw something else up there, or you know, I'll watch the replay so I can click on you, make sure I'm following you. But no one loves your kids like you do. My mommy said yes, yes. So um, sometimes we just feel like, oh, can I really do this? And so anyway, I wrote a guest post for your vibrant Alicia at your vibrant family, and um, I talked about three different reasons. There's three different things. Um, that I thought about that goes into um, teaching your child um, when you're a homeschool mom and really there are advantages. Now the post is called why you could teach your child best. Um, I, I put on my scope um, why you can be a wonderful teacher for your child because honestly all teachers are great. Um, I have a lot of respect for public school teachers. Before I homeschooled I worked in the classroom and, and with the school I was an assistant and um, I wanted to be a teacher. I started going to school for special education, and um, I did really well in school. I actually had a 4.0, but I dropped out. <laughs> I dropped out to be a homeschool mom because I believe in it. I believe in it. So, um, yeah, so instead of being um, a teacher, I decided to be a different kind of teacher. It doesn't pay, but it, it pays. It pays in other ways. So, um, yeah, so anyhow, I'm not going to say it's the best thing to do, but here is why you should believe in you as a mom. And here is what you can give your child in this circumstance. So let's just um, put it that way. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, mom. Um, okay, so I came up with the three F's. Familiarity, freedom, and faith. Familiarity, no one knows your child like you do. No one knows their quirks, um, their temperament, and um, I have notes here. Where are my notes? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, nobody knows their quirks, their insecurities, their temperaments. Um, my children both have sort of... A, different sort of circumstance um we are all ADD we're all ADD okay and so um thank you for inviting and let me know your name kid induced crazy I, I don't know you let me know your first name um yeah so my child all of my children have ADD um but see my son I'll tell you my st his story really quick when he was in school he was in like kindergarten first grade second grade um kindergarten he was AP which means advanced proficient first grade AP he was like 100 percent everything um but then, did someone say ADD? <laughs> Woo! Um, but then in second grade, it started kind of um, coming out where his, his temperament started to change a little bit. And he wasn't little Mr. Perfect AP anymore. And he started having a hard time and struggling. And I noticed right away, like I started seeing these things and I was listening to his teacher and... Um, what? I was distracted. Darcy, yeah, right? We're like, squirrel. <laughs> so, um, so I just started noticing. I was like, oh my goodness. 
I really didn't think that he would have ADD and it started coming out and I started to notice he had it. He's not so hyperactive, but he's distracted. So he has the inattention aspect and the lack of impulse control. So he's not hyper, um, but he, well, his hyperactivity is in, in different ways. Um, I know last night we talked about this on, on my scope. Um, when I was 18, I discovered I had ADD. It shows up differently in girls. Um, I tend to be very impulsive and I tend to talk really fast and I talk a lot. So I guess that's why, you know, that's the hyperactivity. Um, hyper-focusing, yeah, mom, I hyper-focus, so does Lorenzo. Yeah, we all do. Um, the other thing about my daughter is that she um, she went to public school for kindergarten, and she, um, she has a problem with anxiety. Um, the little girl straight up has panic attacks over, ugh, over all different things. She goes through... Um, different phobias i remember when she was scared of bugs and she wouldn't even play outside it was really really sad um she would just stand on the porch and she wouldn't even play outside in a yard that she had played in since she was a baby because all of a sudden she developed this fear um but on along those um, lines with anxiety um i remember in kindergarten you know she had that typical separation anxiety where they cry for a few days um okay alana love you thank you so much um she cried for a few days but it went on for weeks it went on for weeks and the school um the school is across the street from it, it was in the neighborhood i was one block away from the school and my neighbors would tell me um they they lived across the street by lana or by oh, oh sarita's telling alana bye <laughs> i'm sorry um they told me they could hear my daughter in across the street in the houses they're like hey Lindsay, i could hear zoe crying like the whole day and so it was um it was really difficult um for me she did kind of grow at it a little bit but she always felt a little insecure and she just she just had you know certain anxiety issues and mom tells her i sent her with brave dust <laughs> how we finally got her out of that is victoria's secret used to sell this little like um what is it it's like smelly sparkly dust stuff and um i forget i haven't been to victoria's secret in like a grip like nine years nine years or no how old was she five so like i guess it's been like four four or five years um, yeah, so I would I would dust her with this um, sparkly, smelly dust. It was Victoria's Secret love spell. So we would put dr brave dust on her, and then I would put it in her backpack, and I would tell her, if you ever feel anxious, um, just take out your um, pixie dust and just <laughs> put it all over you. I told the teachers about it, so they would let her throughout the day go to her backpack and put on a little bit of brave dust. Brave dust is what we call it. It makes you brave. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's just an example of what I mean with familiarity is we are all familiar with our children um, and all of their quirks and their temperaments and everything. And um, that's one advantage of having them home is that you can tailor make your school for them. You can get um, curriculum that is for their learning style. Somebody made a comment a little while ago about you know how we get to work with their personality and their learning style. That is an advantage of homeschooling. It's tailor-made and it's one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, okay, let me get to my second point, freedom. I absolutely love, this is my favorite aspect of homeschooling is the fact that we have total freedom. Um, I am an MBTI type ENFP. <laughs> we are independent, we are creative, we, are, we like to have things our way. And that's one thing that I absolutely love about homeschooling is I get to make it. I get to create our world. And um, it's just we have absolute freedom. If we want to do a little bit in the morning and a little bit at night, if we want to do some on the weekends, if we want to take a day off and do a, 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 a not a road trip, um, a field trip, um, we get to do that. We get to do that. The freedom, I mean, to me, that is absolutely priceless. If we want to do lap books, we do lap books. If we want to do a unit study, we do unit study. If we want to unschool, we can unschool. You have the freedom to do your school, your life, your way, right? And go see grandma. Mom says, and go see grandma. Yes, we get to take vacations whenever we want. <laughs> Yeah, we get to go see grandma for however long we want. Um, oh, Ashley. Hi, preach it girl. Yeah. Um, I mean, that to me is priceless. It's absolutely priceless. And and it's again, it's tailor made and you have the freedom to do that. Um, public school is awesome, too. You know, there's things that is good about public school. So I'm, I'm not ditching that uh, or dissing that. But um, I mean, you if there's no freedom, there's no freedom. They're there. They do a set thing. It's not tailor made. And I love that aspect of homeschooling. So if you're nervous about homeschooling or if you sometimes feel like, oh, is this really good for them? Just think about the fact that that 
you're getting to do something that otherwise you wouldn't be able to do and there are definitely advantages and benefits to that. How do I maintain discipline and consistency? I don't. <laughs> Um, discipline and consistency is a common thank you Ashley do you do what works for your family what works and that's key um, going back to discipline and consistency um, that is a common topic in homeschooling you will find many many posts on that if you talk to other homeschool moms we a lot of us most of us struggle with discipline and not really dis well being I'm thinking discipline is self-discipline as far as disciplining my kids, I don't know if that's what you mean, like getting them to stay on subject and, and do that. But um, discipline and consistency is, um, Becky, you don't think you're disciplined enough? Let me tell you something. Um, Self-control, self-discipline is my nemesis. It, it is what I have to work on. It is the thing that I am worst at. But it can be done. It can be done. And that's the thing is that um, if you're trying to copy public school and you're doing school at home, maybe it's hard to do with somebody that has a problem with being disciplined. Yeah, maybe you can't do the nine o'clock to three o'clock, get six subjects in each day, have a lunchtime at a certain hour. If that's what, if you're making it, you know, structured like that, then that would be hard to do. But that is the part of homeschooling that is so wonderful is that you do have freedom and you do have um, alternative ways um, of doing things. Um, if you focus on your mission, your homeschool mission statement, if you focus on what you're supposed to be doing and you just keep at it, it gets done. Um, maybe we'll do a whole scope just on that. I think that would be a good idea. Um, I even think that that would be a good idea for a scope hop so that each mom, you let me know, Melanie, um, so that each homeschool mom can state what she does to be as consistent as possible. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to look at school at home and oh, oh, tell you what. Um, if you, Melanie Wilson has a book that's called The Organized Homeschool Life, and she hits so many topics. It just came out recently. Um, you can go to Psycho with Six. Uh, you can go to her blog. Um, I have a link to it on my blog. It's an affiliate link. Um, it's called The Organized Homeschool Life, a week-by-week -week guide to homeschool sanity. Um, Becky, it could be done. It could be done. And honestly, what you think is going to be an issue when you are nervous about homeschooling actually doesn't become an issue. Or you just deal with it. I mean, homeschooling is not as hard as everybody makes it out to be. I think a lot, most people can do it. Most people can do it. You can homeschool anywhere. You can homeschool anytime. And you, there's lots of different learning styles. So um, really, we can go on and on about that. Um, it is, it's something that I think deserves its own scope. So let me just make a note of that and maybe um, talk, talk about doing a hop soon about that. Because I think that would be a good idea. Because we, we need help with that. Um, but yes, check out Melanie Wilson's book, The Organized Homeschool Life. And, um, okay, Becky, yeah, okay, Becky's still here, yay, let me click on you, view your profile, I'm following you now, yay, oh, I almost ended the broadcast, that wasn't good, I always do that, okay. <laughs> yes, um, Melanie, it's a, yeah, I love it, I just became an affiliate this week, and um, Melanie's awesome, so I will scope about that just that subject to convince your husband ooh ooh yeah this is this is we need scopes just on these specific things getting started homeschooling um that's good okay let me just really quick go to my third point um there's familiarity is an advantage um freedom is an advantage and then faith is an advantage a lot of homeschool moms are religious and that's something that um when you're able to homeschool your child you're able to incorporate that into your homeschool um when i was doing um k-12 which is it's school at home but it's a public school um it was like a good six seven eight hours of schoolwork every single day and then on top of it tickles and tots homeschooling and loving it oh that's wonderful that's a good a good resource um Testing stats, what percentile homeschool kids are versus public school? It was way too... Oh, D hi, Diana! Diana, Diana! Um, okay, Diana, you mentioned that you did K-12. Really? I did K-12, too. Yeah, you mentioned that the other day on your scope. Um, it is a ridiculous amount of work, and so at night, I would try to have their personal Bible study with them and be prepared um, for our place of worship and, and do our Bible reading and everything. And um, it wasn't getting done. I'll be honest, it wasn't getting done. And here, my faith in my God is my priority in my life. I dedicated myself to him. I am responsible for teaching my children. 
And yet we would spend six, seven, eight hours a day doing all of this, these secular studies and we wouldn't be able to work in our faith. Now we actually make sure that that's one of the first things we do each day. Um, my kids are in their room right now doing Bible stories. I love it. I love it. And so we are prepared and it's reading, it's writing, it's comprehension. Like we work our faith into um, our, our um, homeschool curriculum. So um, if you are a person of faith, if you are a Bible student um, or you have your own, you know, belief, um, that's an advantage of homeschooling is that you can work that in. And that's something that will not be taught in public school. So there are definitely advantages. Um, there are definitely reasons why you are a wonderful teacher for your child and things that you can give them that no one else can. Um, so yeah, those are three things, freedom, familiarity, and faith. The last point I want to make is that a lot of people think, well, um, I'm not a teacher. I don't have a degree. Here's the thing. There are lesson guides made by teachers and people who make, who have degrees. You follow the lesson guide, they will learn. The other point is that, um, what if your child graduates and they know what you know? They have the amount of knowledge that you have. Would that be so bad? No, it wouldn't. I'm not a doctor. I can't, you know, teach my children to be a doctor. But if they graduate and I teach them everything I know, hey, they're good. Plus, they can go to trade schools. They could take online courses. There are people who have that knowledge. There are things you can do at home um, to get them those certificates or um you can get tutors. There's so many things you can do. Really, honestly, that's probably the least of my worries. I never worry about, you know, whether or not they're going to know what they need to know when they graduate. You take it one year at a time. You follow lesson guides. You do your research. Um, you incorporate, you know, online resources and other resources. And you know what? They will learn what they need to know. So that in itself can be its own scope, too. But I just wanted to encourage you guys and just tell you guys um, that you... Um, that what you are for your child, no one else can be. And um, that really is worth its weight in gold. It really is. And um, okay, so that is it. I am at a half an hour, three minutes until a half an hour. <laughs> if you have to modify during the year, do it. Exactly. And that's, that's it. Point number two is freedom. If something isn't working for you, you have the freedom to change it. That is not something you will find in a public school, but you as a mom, you can give that to your children. You can modify what they need. If something isn't working, change it. And um, really, I love homeschooling. I really do. I love homeschooling, and I, I'm not, there's no going back for me. And um, great. Oh, thank you, Melanie. Um, by the way, if anybody's watching this and you are not a homeschooler yet, but this is something that you were curious about, feel free to contact me. You can email me at the nitty gritty mom at gmail.com. I have a contact sheet on my website. Also, you can join Homeschool Scopes. There's a great um, community of women. I'm sure any one of them would be willing to answer questions. Um, like I said, I have a lady that's going to be calling me um, this afternoon because she is in California and she wants to get started. Um, thank you, Diana. Thank you. And you're not that far from me. I was telling you on your scope the other day, we need to get together, do a field trip or something. <laughs> so, okay. Love you guys. Mommy, thank you for being here. I don't know if you're still here. You probably popped out. But um, I love you guys. Yeah, yeah. I'll message you on that. Um, Going to crash for a nap, Sarita. Oh, thank you. Tickles and Tots, let me know. Um, oh, hi, Mommy. Let me know your first name, Tickles and Tots. I know I know who you are, but I sometimes get everything jumbled. Um, yeah, Diana, I will message you because I was thinking we could put together a field trip. Um, and you could wear your Uggs and scarf and we'll get Starbucks. <laughs> no. Twy that's right, Twyana. That's right. Absolutely. You were on one of my very first scopes, I remember. Okay, so I love you girls. And thank you so much, Melanie. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for letting me host Homeschool Happy Hour. And um, I will make a mental note to scope about those other things, too. About consistency, discipline, and um, what was the last one? There was a last one. I'm going to have to watch that. Okay. I love you guys. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Allison. Oh, did I follow you? I think I did. I am following you now. Okay, thank you, Allison. Take care. Love you guys. <laughs>